Today we're going to talk about inserting images um, and formatting images into your yearbook page. So you find your page. And uh, again, if you go over here to activity, it, under images, activity, then you can find the folder that your pictures are in. And make sure that when you're uploading pictures that you're uploading them to your folder and not somebody else's. Uh, okay, so let's see. I've got a couple more that I want to add. Now, I tried last time uh, to add this picture here, over here, and it didn't work. Okay, so the other possibility is just to delete that photo box, and I'll delete this one too, and put in another one. So if you go up here, it says place new rectangle photo box. You've got all of these choices for photo boxes. Um, I would say, and our, our experience is that uh, a lot of these shapes just don't really work. They look, you know, it's fun to do and it's fun to sort of put in there, but in the end, when you're when you're done, when all is said and done, it it just it doesn't look professional. It looks kind of like scrapbook, uh, something that you know you do in your notebook. Um, the ones that we tend to tend to find that work pretty well are, of course, the box circles and diamonds, if used judiciously. Things like stars. I mean, that works if you've got somebody who's standing there with their arms out or something like that. A triangle could work, depending on what's in the picture. Consider what's in the picture before using uh, using a shape like this. But I'm just going to go for a box, and there's my box. And you know you can resize it any number of ways. You can you can actually, if you go over here to format, you can see right down here is where you can actually set the size by typing down here. So let's say that you have this box and you wanted an identically sized box. Well, the easiest thing to do is just copy and paste it. But uh, let's say that you had something that was already there. You could you could go down here and and type exactly what you say in the width and the height. The x and the y is its location. So notice that the width when I move the picture, the width and the height don't change, but the x and the y do. That comes from your uh, what is it geometry? I am not a math teacher. Okay, so I've got my new photo box here. So I'm going to go back to images and uh, find the image that I'm looking for, drag and drop, and it doesn't seem to want to work. Could be because the image is just too small for that picture. That's what I'm guessing. So now, see, there is a problem. Uh, well, it's not a problem, but it's, uh, it's Jocelyn's way of protecting uh, you from putting in pictures that are just not uh, dense enough, pixel-wise, to look good. And... Um, so what happens is you can only enlarge a picture as much as it'll look good. Jocelyn's the software will not let you put in pixelated pictures. So it looks like, well, let's just try it this way. Let's take my picture, put it in here. You can just drag and drop the image. And uh, let's see. I'm going to stretch it this way. Yeah, you see, there's the maximum. I can't make it go any further, and therein lies the problem. Uh, if I had a better picture, then it would work, but Jocelyn's is not letting me go any wider than that. Now, once I get here, let's say I wanted to keep this. If I double-click on it, notice what happens here. I'll do that again. If I just click on it and move it, it just moves. But when I double-click on it, now I can move the part that I want showing up. And let's, oops, here we go, hold on, one more time. There, okay. And zoom in just a little bit. This is the zoom right here. It doesn't really work very well. I mean, I can zoom out like that. So there's the zoom, and you can move it over. And so there's my picture, okay? And that's the best it's going to be. So it might be better if I take this picture of Mr. Brummage and choose to place it some somewhere else. So if I delete that, I notice I've deleted the picture, but the picture box still stays there. So I'm going to go back over here, look for that picture of Mr. Brummage, which is somewhere around here. There it is. 
and move it here. And uh, that works out really well. And so then this picture, I'll just delete this. And I'll just drag and drop that right down here. And there it fits perfectly. So now I've got my cycling montage. Now I've got a couple others I want to add. I'm going to drag and drop my daughter Samantha right there. And let's see, there's a picture of Samantha and I in the car, I think. Well, I don't see it right now. Well, here's a picture of me folding order forms. And again, I want it's cut my head's cut off, so if I double click on it, I can move it down a little bit. Or what I can do is I can delete this one here. Oops, that's a whole box. And make this larger. D double click, move it over. There's me folding order forms. Do I want the picture? Do I want the copy in the picture? Probably not. So, there you go. Now, uh, other things that you can do with photo boxes. Let's zoom in on the one with with Samantha here. here. If you click on the if you click on the image, it'll zoom in right where you want it to. And if you go over here to fit, or excuse me, zoom. Click on that, and then I'm going to go down to 200. And so there, you see Samantha is right there. It's not off somewhere else on a different page. Now, some of the things that you can do, if you go over here to Format, uh, a stroke is the, the edge of the, the picture. So you notice I have a zero stroke, so that means I have no border. Okay, so if I want a stroke, I can put a three on there. And there I have my black border. Now, of course, I can choose any color I want. Uh, well, in fact, here we go. So we haven't come up with a color scheme yet, but so let's. I'm just going to pick a random color. I'm going to pick green. Oops, missed it. And it's called Holly. Okay, so you can see there that the uh, the picture has got a got a stroke on it or a border. Okay, and you can use the arrow key by the way to move to move things around. Here I'm using the arrow key. So it's it's not as exact as doing it this way, but it certainly makes it a little bit a little bit faster and easier. Okay. Uh drop shadow. Drop shadow is uh what well let's take a look at it. Easier to talk about than okay so you can see right here I've got a drop shadow. It's a shadow and I can make that drop shadow larger, I believe. Uh let's see. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. We'll talk about that in a second. All right. So, uh, what else do we have? We have flip. If we want, which of course doesn't work here because she's got um, words on her shirt. You know, I'll just zoom in a little more. So you can tell that it's flipped because the words are backwards. So I'm just going to flip it back. You know, of course you can flip up and down and so forth and so on. Rotate. And seems like I lost her now. Ah, the pictures suddenly become really large. Now look up here, you've got this, uh, this uh, scroller right here, or a slider. And so it allows you to re redo the picture. Now notice it doesn't go down any further than the size of the box. So I'm going to double click, move it, oh, oops. That was right there. Try that again. Control Z, by the way, is undo. Okay, double click and then move her over and get her in the picture a little bit more. Okay, uh, so let's see. Now this thing here, uh, sometimes you'll have pictures that you'll want to overlap, and uh, this allows you to put pictures, like for example, to the back. Of course, you can't see it if it's in the back. So I'm going to bring it here. This one, bring to front. Okay, and then you have the other ones, bring forward. The difference between bring to front and bring forward is bring to front brings it all the way to the top, Bring forward brings it up one level. So if you've got like four pictures stacked, and this is picture number three, and you want it to be picture number two, you would bring forward and it would move it up to picture number two in the stack. And of course, send backward is the same thing. Okay, corner rounding. Corner rounding, this is a really nice feature that Jostens has. Uh, it allows you to have a sort of nice, smooth corner on something, and you don't have to, in other, in other programs, you would have to use uh, a different shape. Where Jordan, uh, Jordan, Jostens doesn't allow, doesn't uh, 
that you don't have to do that. So here I'm going to round it a little more. That's to 12. So it's getting rounder and rounder. Okay, so now we've got sort of a pill-shaped thing. And if we go all the way, oops, we go to 36. Well, that's about it. Okay, so you can round corners if you want. I'm going to put a slight rounding on my corner. Uh, I can change the shape. I don't have to get a new shape. If I want, I can go to the Pentagon. Uh, uh, Odd-looking. might actually work, but uh, again, I wouldn't use... You know, what would be cool about using this shape is if you made a circle with those shapes so that you had the same size going in a circle. That might work. That might be something interesting to do. But just as it stands by itself, let me zoom out for a second. Uh, here, hold on. It just doesn't look right. Okay, there's just something wrong about it. So I'm going to Control Z to bring that back. Oops, too many Control Zs. Control Y, by the way, is the opposite of Control Z. It kind of jumps you back. Cropping, uh, again, cropping is just what you do when ha what happens when you double click. It's a matter of you can choose to center it or do whatever you show whatever portion of the picture you want. Um, okay, so let's see what have we forgotten here? We got rotate. We've got all that tint and transparency. Uh, let's just go back to that uh, transparency. If you want to be able to see through the picture, somewhat. Uh, I guess if you have letters behind the picture, that would be useful. Like if this were, here, hold on, here, or I made this one one giant picture here so that you could see the picture behind the letters. So if you had something going on, but you wanted the the words to really stand out more, although this doesn't look very good, but that would be the reason that you might want to do something with transparency. I'll put that back. Tint. You can see it, it does make something lighter. Uh, so it doesn't make it transparent, it just makes it whiter. Okay. Now, make background. Uh, that I need, a big, I, I need a bigger picture for. But uh, that also works for colors. So let me just, uh, here, let me go back to fit. Um, let's say that I wanted a solid colored background. What I would do is I would go up here to place new rectangle shape. Click on that. And uh, choose a color. Let's say I want this one. And if I click on make background, it turns that box into the entire page colored background. Um, I may or may not keep that. I don't know. Um, you can also, here, let me undo, control Z. You can also, again, just make sections of your, you know, this is a shape now. Um, make sections of your book a certain color. Now, this is where I would go back here to send to back, and that would bring my pictures forward again. So you can use that. You don't have to have one of the uh, Jocelyn's elaborate backgrounds. You can create your own background with pictures if you have a picture large enough. Um, most of these were taken with an iPhone. In fact, I think all of them were taken with an iPhone, so I don't think they're big enough to make a background out of. Um, let me just choose this one and see what happens when I do that. Oh, there you go. So you can, if you want to, uh, make a background with, with a photo. Um, I don't know what the quality of that would be. Let's just zoom in and take a look. Okay, so you can see it's it's rather it's rather pixelated when you get up close. Um, yeah, look at my arms. Uh, they're just uh, it just doesn't look good. So if you're going to do a background with a photo, you're going to want to do something. Um, you're going to want to pick a photo that's a, a very high quality. And uh, let's see. Uh, control Z. Uh, another thing that you might want to do before you make the background is, uh, I don't know, I don't know about making maybe making it transparent or making it t run the tint up so that it's it's much lighter. Let me go back to fit, and then if I choose to make that a background, I'll do make background again. Notice now it's not um, it's there you can see it, but it's not overwhelming all of the other pictures or the text. So. That's your basic intro to formatting 
images.